This week in Iran, two women journalists stand trial for several charges, including colluding with hostile powers, which they deny. The trials are linked to their coverage of the death of Masa Amini, an Iranian woman who died after the country's morality police took her into custody for apparently violating the dress code, sparking a historic wave of protests last year, protests that continue to this day. The husband of one of the journalists says her trial session on Tuesday lasted less than two hours. Her lawyers did not get a chance to even defend her. The trial for the other journalist began on Monday. Joining us now with more is Masi Alinejad, an Iranian journalist. Uh, Masi, thank you for, for being with us. You've spoken out on the justice system in Iran, which in many ways is a contradiction of terms. What do you want people to know about what these journalists are facing? It is unbelievable that in 21st century, two journalists, Nilufar and Elohe, are being in sham trial, which is disgusting. Why? Because they covered the story of the brutal death of another woman called Mahsa Amini. You remember, Mahsa Amini's brutal death actually sparked a revolution in Iran. And now the two journalists are, like, in, in, in the court, being prosecuted by one of the notorious judge, uh, Salavati, who ex executed many other protesters, who sentenced many innocent protesters to death, and now, um, you know, patronizing, harassing these amazing journalists. You know, this is disgusting. But on the other hand, the killers, those who actually killed Mahsa Amini and more than 600 innocent protesters, they're walking freely in the streets. But these two journalists are in prison for almost uh, eight months and being now uh, in a sham trial. But what is most disgusting, that the killers, the Islamic Republic officials being appointed at the United Nations Human Rights Council. That breaks my heart, Jose. So, so the people that are in charge of repression, oppression, and since 1979 really having clamped down on Iranians' right to even think are at the United Nations Human Rights uh, Council, which is just a, a surrealistic thing to, to begin with. But, but then you have, you know, like uh, an Iranian newspaper leaked details of a, of a new hijab bill introduced yeah. to parliament there, including fines for when not wearing a hijab or, or wearing tight clothes. NBC News has not confirmed the report yet, but what's your reaction to that? How, how do you let us know what is the reality for the Iranian people? I want every single person now listening to me to just ask a simple question, and, 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 like, you know, um, to themselves, that if it was not women of Iran, if it was women in America being kicked out from schools, universities, stadiums, just because of being women or not covering their hair, what would have been their reaction? So I want you to do the same reaction. Because this is a gender apartheid regime, putting cameras everywhere, like Chinese camera, to identify women who are unveiled, kicking out women from stadiums, bullying women, targeting schoolgirls under chemical attacks. So these are the situation of women in Iran. And as I mentioned, Nilufar and Elohe are bringing, like, facing sham trial just because of voicing, giving voice to Iranian women. So this is a gender apartheid regime. And I want you, every single person can hear me, join us and ask the leaders of democratic country to expand the definition of apartheid to all international laws to gender apartheid as well. That's how we can isolate gender apartheid regime. Otherwise, a lot of women getting killed in Iran.